Is Captain America serum possible? Because that'd be super. Science behind Captain America Captain America is one of Marvel's flagship characters. Making his debut during World War II, Cap has been a stable figure in both the comics and the movies. This historical era is what brought about Captain America's now famous origin story. Steve Rogers, a sickly little guy with a lot of heart, undergoes an experimental procedure that makes him into the ultimate super soldier. I just couldn't stay away from this forever. How did the Super Soldier Serum give the first Avenger his powers? To figure out if a Super Soldier Serum in real life is possible, we first have to understand what the procedure was in fiction. We can see here that the serum was injected into Captain America, that's simple enough. He was then put into a chamber that blasted him with Vita Rays, which are fictional. But the process itself might not be. But let's slow down for a sec. We know the process of creating Captain America worked in the origin story, but we also need to go over the effects of the process. In short, Captain America's procedure gave him the absolute physical peak of human ability, which includes superhuman strength, agility, and a super boost to his immune system. Right, so we get how all that worked now. Now, we can take that and try to recreate such an experiment through real-world means. The key here is super strength, which is Cap's main power. The genetic material largely responsible for muscle growth is called myostatin. Myostatin helps keep muscles under a certain size naturally, while its sibling material, folostatin, keeps myostatin in check so that muscles aren't too small. Experiments that stimulate higher muscle growth in living things through the use of myostatin and folostatin have been conducted before. In my sources list in the description, you'll find an article about an experiment that created super strong monkeys by lowering myostatin levels, allowing for a higher rate of natural muscle growth. I've also talked about this topic in my video about venom. But let's jump back to Captain America. It's possible that an experiment that lowers myostatin could be conducted on a human. Heck, a lot of bodybuilders do this. But what about superhuman strength? The ability to keep a helicopter from taking off by holding on to it tight enough. Well, this is where a fall of statin comes in. This is also soon to be where a Stanford scientists come in, the same people I mentioned in my video on the Hulk. If enough fall of statin were to enter the body, it would overpower the amount of myostatin and reduce it. The only issue with this is, fall of statin doesn't work exactly like that. Well, it can, but here, let me just show you. When it enters the body like that, Falstatin would have to act similar to a virus, which I'll get to in a little bit. Basically, the body's immune system would reject it and make it useless or fight it off. So, before giving an injection of such high amounts of falstatin, the subject's immune system would need to be lowered. Luckily, for our purposes, Steve Rogers already had a low immune system by the time he was subjected to the serum. However, there are, of course, tons of ways to lower the immune system in normal individuals too. So we have a subject who's undergone treatment that has lowered their immune system, and we now need to make a serum that will bring them to a superhuman physical prime. We've talked about how statin can do this, but the thing is, we need to get it to act like a virus upon entering the body. How do we accomplish this? This is the part where the Stanford scientists come in. I don't want to be one to steal work from someone, so I've linked the article about what they found in the description in my sources. But basically, there is a way to get this sort of thing to work. There's a type of molecule called dendromeres that are extremely branchy and sort of clustered together. These attributes allow them to carry more genetic material than viruses and hold onto that material until they're prompted to do otherwise. Basically, dendromeres are boxes with the genetic stuff we need inside them, and once they're injected into the body, we just need to find a way to open them. This is basically how viruses work. So, let's say the serum is actually dendromeres with vitamins like vitamin E and vitamin C, which will reboost the immune system of our subject, and a lot of statin. What happens next? We can inject that into the body, but the box is still shut. How do we open it and give our subject superhuman abilities? Well, here's the cool thing. Dendromeres can be activated by a type of electromagnetic radiation called UV rays, or ultraviolet rays, which are basically the real-life equivalent of Captain America's Vita rays. If we have a subject who's been injected with immune system-supporting vitamins and a lot of statin, all being carried by dendromeres, and we zap this subject with ultraviolet rays, we'd actually be able to open that box to activate those vitamins and that statin, 
restoring the immune system and canceling out a lot of the subject's myostatin, resulting in, depending on how much follostatin was put in, a higher amount of increased muscle mass, possibly superhuman levels. So there we have it. Captain America Super Soldier Serum, in theory, is very possible. We've already had tons of experiments try to, in some respects, replicate what this fictional serum does, but we've never quite got it to superhuman levels. But technology is developing all the time. You can bet that superhuman won't be all that super pretty soon. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the episode of Science Behind the Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as to what superhero or super villain you guys want to see me do next. This is a fun one to do because I really, I, I keep saying this, but I really like getting into the groove of just like doing main superpowers rather than like getting into really smaller details. And that's fun and it's still educational and that's the whole point is to be able to teach people things about the world through means like this. But I myself, I'm always going to be a geek. So being able to like look at this kind of stuff that's more prevalent in uh, the movies and the comics and all that. It's really, really interesting, and it's really fun for me personally. And I've wanted to do Captain America for a long, long time. This is almost like an eighth-month video incoming, almost. This is a long time coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and stay tuned for next week. Have a good one.